You know, a lot of you probably know me as the guy who orders honey oat milk lavender lattes and watches Gossip Girl on repeat. But I rock pretty hard too. In fact, a lot of people who may be following this channel for a while may be like, yeah, Sean used to rock pretty hard. Used to be his thing before we turned into like an indie dream pop side man. <laughs> so we're going to cover a lot of ground today. We're going to talk about riff writing. How you kind of come up with riffs, the chords that you put over them, what comes first, the riff or the chord, how you get good tone out of stuff. I want to say right off the bat, this video is sponsored by Sweetwater. I'm going to be using two of the Walrus audio pedals. One of them is an overdrive. One of them is a distortion. Both really cool. We're going to talk about the difference of which, something that I didn't understand at first. But let's start out with the riff and the chords that go with it. I'm going to be playing a lot of my original music, so if you guys are OGs that have been following the channel, please feel free to tell me what songs I'm actually playing in these examples. And we're going to start off with probably what I would consider uh, my most my most listened to song. The riff sounds like this. Well, first here's the clean. This is just clean right here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a the walrus uh, ages here. It's an overdrive pedal. Okay. And we're going to do a couple different things. First of all, I'm going to turn the gain up and the volume down a little bit. pentatonic E riff. But here's the thing, when you're playing the song, you don't want to write you don't want to burn the riff out, okay? So real quick, we'll talk about how to play this. So I'm just kind of chugging on the low E string and then grabbing the octave E, which is the 7th fret of the A string. And then Okay, so right there. All the great riffs in rock history are in minor. Usually they're E minor or A minor, but it doesn't really matter. What it, how you diagnose that is there's the root note, and the minor 7, the 7th note in the minor scale, is always going to be two frets behind the root note. So, using the root note of the minor scale and the minor 7th is a great way to just write riffs. want to come up with it, right? And then in that particular riff, it's I'm kind of walking it back. And again, so this is like, you know, it's very classic Rocky. The one thing that I will add, if you want to have a more of a modern sound, this little chromatic. The last part is just on the E string. Seven, six, five, three, five. This is very like Muse. Right? Uh, that kind of chromatic about the scale. Okay? But getting the sound is very important. Okay? So, like I said, this comes from the E minor scale. That's the whole riff, right? Now, when you're really just jamming on it with the overdrive pedal, it makes sense to just kind of go hard. But then when you get to, like, the verses and there's singing that comes in, a lot of times you kind of have to leave some room. So the perfect thing about this Walrus Ages pedal and overdrive pedals in general, when you back off the volume knob, you get something that's much closer to the clean sound. See, that doesn't sound distorted anymore, right? Volume all the way up. Which, again, sounds great, but in the context of a song, you want to bring that dynamic. You want to really ride it out a little bit. So. Going back on the volume knob kind of gives you really what up on, very similar to what up on the clean channel would sound like, okay? Now, something that is very important, I think about these pedals specifically, is that they have EQ sections. It's real simple EQ sections. You have a bass and a treble. One thing that, I, one mistake that I made on early on with a lot of my, my riffs, treble would be up, right? <laughs> high end would hurt my ears because I would mix it so loud. So the nice thing is you actually have the ability to roll that off on here aside from just the guitar because it doesn't make a difference, all right? Now, what I was saying about volume uh, knobs earlier, and again, I'm rocking the Ernie Ball, the St. Vincent Goldie today. I want to do something that goes with that right there, okay? So we have to determine where that tonal center is. We're starting on the E. note that I go to here after that riff is a G and 
then I end up on an A, okay? So if I'm gonna put chords over that, I have to kind of find out well, what are the target spots of that riff? E, E minor, is the most natural place to start, okay? So I'm gonna start with the E minor chord. And then remember that riff. G, A. So it's like, all right, well, if I'm in the key of, you know, E minor, what, what can I do with this G and the A? I'm just gonna make them power chords, okay? So the chord version of that riff could be E minor. power chord versions of G and A. And again, backed off the volume knob sounds a little bit different than So I reserve the power of the full overdrive for the Okay? So really cool stuff that you can get with an overdrive pedal. Uh, another example of kind of like stuff that I use it more for now, like let's say I'm going to turn the gain back, volume up, maybe boost the bass. And, the nice thing about these two is like you have a bunch of different uh, types of modes as far as like if you want high gain, low gain, different types of saturation, stuff like that. I personally for this one just like it on the first mode. Now a lot of stuff that I do is going to be finger style playing like. So again, when you bring it up. It sounds wildly different depending on where your volume knob is. So, personally, if I'm playing something live, I don't want to always be kind of like trying to hit pedals because one thing, I have huge feet and I can never hit the right pedal that I want to. I'll always like mess around and hit the wrong knobs. So I kind of like to start a song with the pedals engaged and then use the volume knob to manipulate what I'm actually playing within the song. Otherwise, I'm going to screw it up. That's just a me thing. I'm sorry. But like I said, that's a great example of like... Getting one kind of tone, and then doing something like that. Great example of that is uh, Shaky Graves. If any of you guys are Shaky Graves fans, he's amazing. He drives his amp with really kind of like a semi-hollow or hollow body acoustic, essentially kind of like the same deal. Now, I do want to also talk about uh, just straight up distortion, okay? So we're going to turn this off, and again, here's the clean. Now, if we're talking straight up distortion, this is going to be different. Huh? I have this dialed in, gains all the way up, right? Volume is kind of even. Uh, treble and bass are essentially pretty even. I'm going to go to the first note. Okay, now if I roll my volume back, it's still pretty distorted. Right? Now it's just louder. So, I have a little less play in the tone. But what you get with uh, with a really cool distortion pedal like this, this is gonna go on forever, right? It's just like the regular sustain. So really cool, amazing things you can do with the distortion pedal, compression, sustain. This pedal's great for something like that. Okay. Another thing about these, they actually have blend knobs, so you can kind of blend in the sound too, which is something that's very helpful. But uh, for this, I really like kind of like these little power chord drifts. Like... Stone Age type style chords, right? Uh, one really cool way to do that, now let's say you just take a regular A power chord, right? 5, E, 7, A, 7, D. And then one cool thing that you can do is just take your ring finger and come on it and off it. to it, which you can't really get with an overdrive, right? So I really like that that kind of thick sound, that always on distortion making everything dirty. It doesn't matter where your volume knob's at, you're just rocking it. And that's like the higher gain stuff. Okay, so 
know. To me, that's pretty thick in a mix that might not stand out so well. So that's why you want to take your treble there and then maybe... <laughs> combination with your pickups. Right now I'm just on the neck, so maybe if I can... So again, it's kind of finding that sweet spot where you're not hurting your ears with the treble, and again, you can use, you know, your, your tone knobs for stuff like that too. But really important to kind of understand the difference between overdrive and uh, distortion. Another thing that I like on distortion pedals is when you palm mute it, like for example. Right there, I'm kind of like sitting on the... Right, you kind of hear that? If I was just open... when it's just kind of like sloppy there's too much distortion all the chords get lost together which maybe you're in a grunge band and that's kind of what you want but i always think that like using a little bit of palm muting on your distorted line and yeah I, I think that's kind of like the way to do it right a lot that you can kind of get into with that now the next thing we're going to talk about is stacking them together okay so let's say we have something that we like, uh, and even, man, I just, I just love overdrive pedals more than anything. Like even just right there, it just warms it up, right? Here's full volume clean. Sounds amazing. Supro, Black Magic Reverb, uh, micing it with the Sennheiser mic, 609. It doesn't so much change the, the actual, like, overdriven nature of it if you have that gain down. But just kind of having it go through the pedal gives it warmth. And then if you want to stack it with, you're kind of taking that warmth and then distorting it. So I'm going to try to dial this in real quick where maybe I don't have like a ton of gain on this, bring the volume down on the overdrive. Seven. Just jam on that root in that minor seven. You notice that my fingers are doing some of the sustained work. With these interval riffs, you kind of want to like get these like sharp hits. Otherwise, like again, with the distortion pedal, you want to be conscious of how you're kind of muting and sustaining certain notes because, like like we said. It'll sustain forever! So be conscious of how you like... Your, your technique as far as like muting certain things. And again, if I'm just gonna use intervals, I'm gonna have a root note. It's minor seven. A root note. It's major seven. A root note. It's major six. A root note. And it's eighth. So I think that's kind of like a cool little line. scales one minor scale or the major scale and knowing
only the difference between a root note and its major six, minor seven, major seven, octave. And then when you get really cool, you can kind of. Then you get harmonic minor and stuff like that. I, it's funny how many people talk about like harmonic minor stuff when it's really they're just kind of adding like one interval to a minor song, which is really what it is. You know what I mean? But usually in, in songs that I hear that use harmonic minor, they still have the minor seven in there. They're just adding that, you know, major seven into the minor scale, whatever, so on and so forth. So like I said, these pedals are really great. My favorite part about them is that they have the, every every distortion or overdrive pedal should have these two knobs right here, a bass and a treble uh, kind of EQ real quick. Again, I love that you can blend it in and out. Volume and gain, really start working those just like you're working an amp. Uh, that's probably the number one thing that I didn't really understand when I first started out. It's like, oh, just turn it. I just want it louder. I'm just going to turn the gain up. You end up getting a totally different tone than what you started with. But yeah, thanks to all Walrus Audio. Thanks to Sweetwater for working up the pedals. Uh, I'll have affiliate links in the description if you guys are interested. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.